Okay, so I'm gonna record this intro now so that it can be included in all of my future videos. What I say, unless I am reading scripture or directly quoting a prophet, is my, my opinion and my opinion alone. I might follow the archaeological evidence or the science that exists, but it is mine and my, it is my opinion. It's, it's not the church's opinion, it's no one else's, it's just mine. So this little clip here will go in front of every other video I make so that people can't say that I'm misrepresenting the church. Alright, so I figure that today I will uh, I'll talk about repentance um, because um, well, last week I was planning on it and I just ran out of time, so I ended up only doing the second half of what I was originally going to do, so this is going to be the first half of that. Um, or, what was going to be the first half of what I was going to talk about, but that ran into way too long of a time period, and I just didn't have the time to do it. And last week's, I actually had time to record. <laughs> this week, I still don't have time to record. So, this week, I'm going to talk about repentance. Um, how can I discuss it anyway? Uh, what is repentance? Well, the reason I want to talk about repentance is because I have actually heard a lot of people in my life say I don't want to repent. Well, why don't you want to repent? Because it's a punishment. I, I then have to be punished for what I did. Uh, they take stuff away from you. They deprive you of things. Like being able to say prayers in public. Okay. Whatever, who cares? Um, but it hurts me that people think that way, especially members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so, anyway, uh, so what is, what is repentance? What, I mean, what is it exactly? Now, most people say, oh, it's, it's. Most people say, well, it's, um, it's, it's, um, stopping sin. It's to stop sinning. <laughs> I've heard that a lot, but it's not. So... Webster's Dictionary literally defines it as a change of mind. A fresh view of God, yourself, one's self, and the world. That means to turn away from one thing and rethink it. That's literally what it means. Then the Bible Dictionary. The Bible Dictionary defines it as a change of heart from sin to God, a renunciation of sin. Webster's Dictionary also includes the definition of to feel regret or contrition. Those are the Bible. The, 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 that's 
Webster's Dictionary, the Bible Dictionary, and the Webster's Dictionary. They are literally the same definition. It means to turn away from one thing, sin specifically, and turn to God. Two. So if Webster's Dictionary and the Bible Dictionary can agree on this thing, that repentance means to turn away from it, to change directions, to rethink your life, <laughs> how can it be a punishment? Yes, there's a little bit of pain involved, but the pain is in your own Guilt. <laughs> That's pain. Guilt is pain. And feeling guilty for something is painful. And so sin is, can feel comfortable for some people. And moving to something else is uncomfortable. But that pain comes from the guilt you feel and the uncomfortableness of the transition. It's not a punishment. It is the normal pain of life and change and growth. Alma himself says that he suffered the most exquisite pain as he cried out. So... He literally says he goes from the most exquisite pain to the most blissful joy. Um, so, it's happiness from pain. Not, it's not meant to be painful in and of itself. It's meant to bring you joy. It's meant to bring you happiness. It's meant to bring you back to God. So that's what repentance is. But how do you do it? How, how do you repent? How, how do you implement something like taking on the ability to use Christ's atonement? The first thing you have to do is you have to feel a godly sorrow. You have to want to change. Because, and I know this because I know people that have been this way. You can't say, I've repented of my sins and not want to change. Because you go right back to doing that same sin. And yes, again, like I said, I know this because I know people who are like this. They go, well, I repented for my sins. I, I, I changed. And then they, the next day, are right back to doing that thing. I know Christians out there that have said they accept Christ and they've repented for their sins. And yet they still do things that he has told them specifically not to in the Bible. And if you remember the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, in the Doctrine and Covenants slash Book of Mormon. And they still do those things on a daily basis. And then they say they repent and then they go right back to doing those things. That's not repentance. It's not what repentance is. You have to feel bad. You have to. You have to feel bad for the things you've been doing. Not for getting caught for doing the... Not 
for getting caught doing them, not for being told you have to feel bad because you want to feel bad for what you did. Then, you have to ask for forgiveness. You have to beg, you have to plead, you have to ask the Lord to forgive you. To help you resist doing what you've done. To make you bigger, better in that form. You have to ask him to forgive you and to help. Because you can't do it on your own. You can't. Getting over temptation, especially the temptations that are your weaknesses, is hard. It's hard. It's really hard. It's not something you can do on your own. It's not. And then, after that, then if you have not been, according to Christ, you must be baptized. Baptism, it, baptism by the proper authorities is not optional for true repentance. You can change and you can grow and you can be fully forgiven. But without baptism, washing away all previous guilt, how can one change? And I'm just stating it as it is in the scriptures. I believe it's Matthew. Let's Thank you. Three. He says, Bring ye forth fruits unto repentance. And it's not just fruits unto repentance, it's fruits meet unto for repentance. So what is a fruit meet unto repentance? Even Jesus, the most perfect of persons, was baptized. Uh, 
he told a Pharisee that a man must be born of both fire, water and fire, or fire, water and the spirit to be saved. That's baptism by the proper authority. John the Baptist had the proper authority, and when Christ was baptized, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Went straightway up out of the water, and lo, the heavens open, were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning, and lighting upon his face. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus Jesus was baptized as an example for us as to what we must do when Christ says that we that a man must be born of water and of the spirit he means first we must be born of water having been baptized and second of the spirit means that we must receive the Holy Ghost and repent of our sins continually having a mighty change of heart and turning ourselves to God so First is an extraordinary feelings, a guilt, a godly sorrow for your sins. Then, then, after a godly sorrow, then you ask for forgiveness. And then, if you have not yet been, you become baptized by the proper authority. It's not just anyone that says they can baptize you. That is by a priesthood holder. And right now, the only church on this earth that holds the priesthood is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's not saying that other churches aren't true. Because there are lots of churches out there that have truth. Don't get me wrong. But that's the only church that has the priesthood. The authority by which you baptize. Alright. Thank you for that. I hope you all have great joy in your lives as you come to learn and feel and understand how to repent and that it is not something bad it is the best thing in the world trust me i've repented for lots <laughs> i've done a lot of stupid stuff in my life and i've had to repent for it and you know what i don't regret any of the repentance process not ever thanks have a good night